Welcome to Treacherous Trap Tuesday. This is the DMG and welcome to 70 System. And this one is the Scything Blade Door Trap. <laughs> Thank you to all the people who support me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash 70 system. Click the like button, subscribe and click the bell for notifications of future videos. Now this one is the Scything Blade Door Trap. So traditionally this would obviously be in a corridor or something to that effect. But we're going to do things just a little bit differently. The obvious way that this is obfuscated is that it is actually within the framework of the door. So it's hidden the grooves are hidden within the door jam that goes around the side of the door or in the stonework that's surrounding the door, depending on how your dungeon is put together. Once again, the lure is simply that the characters will want to pass through this door. So you can place anything on the other side of this door of interest. And that is basically how they are going to want to pass through here. It's best if the door is open. Um, however, if you want to be really really fiendish lock the door as well because they'll th never think once they've unlocked the door and opened it all good ah, you gotta be evil. evil so the trigger is really the flagstone or whatever on the inside of the door so the characters come in from the outside they step into the inside and it's a very sensitive plate or wooden floor or something to that effect so the moment you apply any pressure to it a huge blade comes through the door jam. Basically, you can just roll it right through if you like. So it goes to the other side. Um, or it acts like a guillotine. So just from the top and then goes back up again. Depending on how far the character is through, you know, we'll check in the effect phase as to what can happen here. Now, this trap doesn't really have any kind of containment. It's, you know, it's, it would be relatively easy to dodge this trap. So it has to happen very quickly. So the trigger has to be extremely sensitive and the blade has to move very, very quickly. In fact, it's better if the blade moves in the blink of an eye. So it, you, they would have to do some kind of senses or per perception check to even see the blade moving. And we see, as we said, the effect, fast blade. Now, if it drops down and they're partially through the door, it can lop off a leg. It can lop off an arm that's behind them. Um, it can destroy weapons, it can break open armor, it can chop off a foot, it can chop off a hand, it can chop off the head, it can just slice the person directly in half. Um, they could also, if they know the trap is there and a monster is coming towards them, like you know, something with you know a long neck, they can push on the trigger and <coughs> chop its head off. So there's a variety of uses for this trap um, and it you know, it depends on how dangerous you want to go. But a nice big single blade, shing, as a guillotine or a rolling, um, a circular disc blade that just rolls from one side of the door to the other. Or you can even do a scissors blade so that shing, there's also aperture blade. It kind of works the same way as a camera's aperture, which think the defensive gate on the stargate. Now for disposal, of course, we've talked about disposal in various other traps. Um, the, you could have a creature that roams around and that's its job is to eat all the dead people from the traps. But of course, another way would be that the floor beneath the door opens up and you drop down into the body catchment, catchment or body part catchment area. This is great if you, the character has managed to go through, but a piece of the equipment gets chopped off and falls down into this hole. And now they've got to try and get it out. Of course, this is deadly again, because they're attempting to do this with this fully functional trap about their person. So there's no way for this trap to really adapt itself. I mean, unless you want to use multiple different blades. So you could have the guillotine style, the side scissor style, the aperture style, the rolling circular saw style, uh, all these, you could have multiples of those in the door so that it changes up each person who goes through, it changes the type of blade that it's using. So someone may think that they're going to block 
a, the, the guillotine coming from the top, and the next one is the circular saw. Again, it depends on the type of dungeon that you have, that you designed, uh, the type of person who built the dungeon, all these kind of things come into play as to how fiendish the trap actually is and how deadly it is and how many people you're going to hit with this. And finally, the reset, as we said, you know, the blade moves very quickly. So, you know, coming down, it goes back up straight away. Uh, the rolling blade gets reset on the other side. Um, and if they step on the trigger, so the one leg steps on the trigger and then they bring the second leg onto the trigger, that hits it as well. So it can double whammy. Another interesting thing you could do is have a trigger on the outside that doesn't trigger until the trigger on the inside has triggered. So the moment they step on the trigger on the inside, they may be able to jump backwards. But the moment they hit the one behind them, they re-trigger the trap so that they get a double hit. The type of characters you want to be using this against obviously would be higher level characters uh, and you'd, you'd want to use this only in areas that need to be heavily protected. So that's the Scything Blade Door Trap and we'll cut it off there!